Okay, picking up our left hand, we're talking about RAID 5. So the goal of RAID 5 is to do the same thing that RAID 1 would do, but RAID 1 is just not scalable. In other words, I don't want to drop by 10 drives and get five drives worth of capacity out of it. I mean, unless you got unlimited amount of money, that is just not scalable. Let's say I had 100 drives. Okay, 100 drives, but I only get 50 drives worth of uh, storage capacity? Wow. So RAID 5 was designed to kind of step in there and accomplish the same goal, but not be quite so wasteful. And here's how it works. <clears throat> um, to make RAID 5 work, I have, to have a, I have to have a minimum of three drives to pull this thing off. But let's just let's go back to our example of, of 10. I have 10 drives. The way it works now, and I'm not, getting into, I'm not going to get into the magic of how RAID works, so let's just forget about that part. What happens is when you create a volume, a RAID 5 volume using 10 drives, what happens is you get nine drives worth of capacity. Don't worry about the magic. So basically how many drives you got? If I have five drives, I'm getting four drives worth of capacity. If I have 20 drives, I'm getting 19 drives worth of capacity. It's always just one less than the number of drives you got. Cool? Almost like you should be paying attention to that. <clears throat> so. If I had four disks at one terabyte a piece and I put a RAID 5, what would be the size of the volume? That would be three terabyte total. Four disks, one terabyte a piece. I lose one of the capacities, so I'm down to three. Cool. <clears throat> so RAID is pretty good for a single drive failure. If a single drive fails, man, you're okay. You're still operational. Now, I'll confess, if you had two drives that fail, uh, yeah, you, you, you got some problems. There actually is a thing called a RAID 6, which will allow you to survive a two-drive failure, but most people don't use that. Now, this is not a, re a replacement for backups. Why is that? I mean, you just told me that stuff gets written to this one and it gets uh, saved over here, you know, in some magic, uh, so that if a drive failed, uh, I wouldn't have it. Well, is that what ha actually happens on a daily basis in your real world? I mean... Is that the reason why you go to the recycle bin and pull something up because of a drive failure? Isn't it more likely what happened is you accidentally deleted something that you didn't really mean to delete? So what's gonna happen is if you delete a file in a RAID, it's gonna go delete it in all the RAID drives. So backups are still very important. You know, disk recovery is one issue, but most of the time you're doing a backup, not because of a hardware failure, you're doing a backup and restore operation because somebody was an idiot. Okay, I'm just saying. <clears throat> okay, so let's keep going. Uh, on page uh, six, I mean 762, they talk about file systems. Um, there's a thing called a UFS, and we talked about EXT4 and EXT, XFS, all these file systems out there. There's, an op there's a, one of the options is what's called journaling. Journaling is a technique that a file system uses so that when it's writing to the disk, it kind of, keeps track of what it's writing in case there's a power failure in the middle of writing a file that he goes hang on I wasn't finished so let me go back and redo that over again so journaling is all about I got interrupted and therefore I need to I need to know that I got interrupted without journaling the machine has not a clue if you were finished writing that file or not so any one of the file systems with journaling are better for for most people. Uh, There's a thing called an inode, but that's that's basically the uh, every file in a file system gets assigned a number. Okay, cool. And it's basically a disk block numbering scheme. Okay. And then there's a super block, and then uh, that's all a bunch of junk. We're gonna skip over that. We already done the uh, make FS thing, so we're just gonna skip over it. Now, file system consistency check, FSCK, that's a command we haven't used much. But what it basically does is it goes through and checks out the health of the system. Now, if your file system has journaling, this goes rather quickly because it just checks the journal and says, hey, there's not much going on. But every single time you boot your system, it does it runs an, an FSCK on it. If you did not have a journaling system, then every time you boot your system up, you'd probably have to wait a minute for that thing to, to finish before you could actually log in, and that's not good because it has to go out and actually go and check to see if every single directory entry actually does point to an honest to God real file 
and that the power didn't go out while you were in the middle of writing something. So that can take an awful lot of time. In the old days, before journaling, uh, they tried to do this all in parallel. They tried to fix it so that if you had like four or five disks, you tried to run them, run the FSCK, all four of them simultaneously, so that when they finally finished, you'd be able to boot the system. And you remember when we were doing the FS tab? One of the one of the one of the numbers at the very end was the order in which you run the file system check. I bet you don't remember that, do you? Okay, I'm going to skip the mount and the FS tab because we've we've done that before. There are some new things out there, the next generation file system, ZFS and BTRFS. And basically these things combine the duties of like this volume group guy. So the, instead of having a separate volume management thing, they do volume management and file system simultaneously. So yeah, they're kind of cool, uh, I'm, but I'm gonna skip most of that. Data backup strategies on page 7088. I'm not necessarily talking about mechanically how you do this. This is a, a philosophical discussion of what you need to be thinking about when you have a backup strategy. So this is the bullet list. It talks about what data do I back up? Do I back up everything? Uh, what technology am I gonna use? Am I gonna back it up to a tape? Am I gonna back it up to a hard drive? Where will it be in stored? I mean, these physical, these physical tapes, because you don't wanna store them in the same room as your server, because if the room caught on fire, you'd lose the original and the backup, right? Should it be encrypted? In other words, should my backup be encrypted? So I'm storing it in some other location. Is it under lock and key? Is, is it just in the desk of the, uh, of the system administrator out in the cube farm that doesn't even have a door? That wouldn't be secure, would it? And what's the life cycle cost of doing all that? And then the timelines. How often are you performing a backup? Is it daily? Um, how often does it take to, to validate and test and do a restore of files? Uh, how long do you keep them? What's the data retention time? That's an awful lot of stuff you need to know. And then, who has access to the backup? Who has the encryption keys to be able to do a restore? I mean, if you're saying, well, we're going to keep this thing super duper uh, secret, and so uh, I'm the only one who knows the password to the uh, backup, and then you go on vacation, they're going to have no choice but to call you on the phone and say, hey, man, we need to recover this file, and nobody knows what the password is. So, you know, that ain't smart. Uh, who runs the backup? You know, do you have people that are trained in this? Uh, who runs and does the validation or does the restores? And then how do you do the restore? How do you keep the backup media safe? Do you keep it on the cloud? Let me tell you, cloud computing is great, but it is not. I mean, in a, in a typical environment at home, now maybe in corporate in America, you might be better off. But, you know, my upload speed is, I don't know, like, you know, I get 100 megabits down, but I get like 5 megabits up or 10 megabits up. And 10 megabits up is what I need when I'm doing a backup to the cloud. And boy, that sucks. Okay, that's the philosophical content associated with backups, not getting into the details on how to do a backup, but just things you have to think about when you do a backup. Okay, we've reached the end of this chapter, and we'll see you guys again in some future video.